Okay guys, we're back in the shop today. Um, a while ago we did some of these jigs with lead and uh, now I'm going to get to powder coating them today. And I wanted to run you through that. Um, I've done a few videos on powder coating before, but we're going to just focus on the powder coat itself. So we'll get our stuff put away and from the lead pouring and we will break out the powder coating. Um, for, for doing my jigs, I just built this little fluid bed. I've used a three inch closet flange for a toilet. I tapped a, you know, it looks like a three eighths threads in there. And then I've got a three eighths by quarter nipple or three eighths by quarter bushing. And then I went to a needle valve here. And then from there, put in a three inch, actually no, let's see, yeah, three inch by two inch bushing. Then I would have put a little nipple in there. And then on top of that, I put this union and another short nipple of pipe there. So in this union, pretty simple. I just do it less than hand tight. That's just, uh, you got some papers in it. And I'm not even sure what kind of papers I used. Oh, it looks like that's just regular printer paper from uh, mama's computer. So what's nice about that? See, that's still white. What's nice about that computer paper is it just sits right on there. The top side of this uh, union has a little rubber O-ring that uh, compresses the paper. So I'm just gonna put that back on there. We'll just put that on again. A lot of guys use different materials for their uh, filter to filter the powder from the air chamber. Um, you could use um, a coffee filter potentially. A lot of guys use brown paper bags, but like I say on mine, I just use printer paper and it's good enough for who it's for. So then you can adjust your air with that needle valve. I'm a big fan of old time desks. I think they're pretty cool the way they used to build things. This one's kind of cool because I still have my lead mounted here. And all I got to do is go like this. Boom. And we're free to do another project. So that's kind of fun. When you want to do lead again, you just lift up on that. She'll come out to you and play. So let's get to work. Okay, so I'm going to start by taking an air compressor and blowing off the money end of this. And that will just uh, get the loose stuff. So now we're ready to put our papers back on. Just going to set them there. Set that on top. Thread that on lightly. I'm gonna go with orange because I got a couple bottles. I'm just gonna pour it in there. Okay, so now I got that hooked up. I'm gonna dump that in. Try not to spill too much of it. So now I'm gonna give it a little bit of air. And as you can see, hopefully. It starts to bounce around a little bit. You can see it coming off on the sides there. Okay, so it was that deep. Now it's about half that deep. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to add a little bit more orange. Because I've got a little more. And we'll get it up closer to the top. You kind of just hold the lead there till it gets a little bit shiny. Once that happens, you're usually good to go. Nice even coat. You want to make sure not to fill the eyelet if you can. A 
The reason I tap that is to make sure I get all the paint out of the eye. I mean, that's just a beautiful little jig if you ask Fat Boy. Beautimus. A lot of times I'll turn this up when I'm wanting to do production. You can do them a lot quicker. Just like so. I'll pull one down real quick that's already been cooled. And you'll see what I'm talking about. Nice and orange. Good fluorescent color. You can see I probably should put a different filter in. Kind of coming out the edges more than the middle. Maybe I'll just put one piece of paper and see how that goes. But it doesn't really matter. A lot of the times I will just not even use a fluid bed. Looks like I got a little paint in that one. I can just take another hook, stab her through. Once that cools, it's very brittle. And so you can stab it through, break it off and then put it back on the heat and it'll shrink that back so you have your hole back again. Hope that's helpful to some. Really not too complicated. Looks like I'm losing all my powder out the side here. But boy, I got that one really shiny. That won't take much of a dip to do that. But that looks pretty. Pretty nice. We'll do a little bit bigger jig this time. Maybe it'll be a better visual for you. There you have it. That's kind of a tube jig. You put it inside of a plastic tube. So I usually don't bother coating those, but just wanted to give you a visual. There's a big boy there. That one's probably store bought. Boy, it's a lot prettier though. Once you do that, it makes a big difference on what she looks like for sure so we'll give that a dip definitely change the look of that one and I've been known to do different things this this is a piece of lead I put on an alligator clip make some uh, depth finders for ice fishing been known to do that and just dip them in after you heat them so if you have a favorite tool that you don't want to lose your Chinese crescent wrench that you just gotta have your eyes on you can heat that bad boy up and I've actually done this with different things um, car keys are a good one you can just powder coat the end of a car key Yeah, that's going to take a lot more heat than that. So 
So we'll hold it on for a little longer. Give that another dip. That's better. So that's going to turn fluorescent orange. And when it's in your junk drawer, maybe it'll stand out better next time. Another thing we can probably dip is these little slide sinkers. We'll put them on a piece of wire. It's going to be pretty. So we'll let that cool off a little bit and then it'll be nice and coated. Then you're not getting lead on your hands when you're messing with them. That might not be a bad lick. In fact, I'm going to fold that over right there and just hang it till it cools. And uh, take another piece of wire and do the same thing. We just taught ourselves something, guys. So there's another one. We'll slide it on. Put a little hang hanging handle on there. Take a dip. Okay, now we'll hang that up with our little hooky bob we made. A few jigs we did today. See how they turned orange? Some of these bigger ones, pretty stuff. And like I say, I could probably change that filter out. Maybe just put one piece of paper in. I'll have to fiddle with that. But uh, that's how we do it. We'll go see how that wrench turned out. Oh yeah, nice, pretty wrench. Easy to see. Well, guys, thanks for coming along. Um, we will see you on the next one. Just wanted to detail that a little bit. Nothing's perfect in this shop, but we give it a good shot. We, we try to hit what we're aiming at sometimes, and sometimes we get lucky and uh, hit the mark. So that's what I wanted to show you today. Have a good one. We'll catch you on the next one. Tight lines.